These are 11 settings for your DJI Mini 3 Pro that you should change immediately if you want to nail good looking footage every time that you're out flying and not ending up with something like this. I'm pretty sure that one of them will surprise you as it goes against what other channels are teaching you. But these are the settings that really matter, that will give you great footage directly out of the camera with little or no post-processing. Resolution and frame rate. I use 4K 30 frames per second as my default setting. You can go down to 25 frames per second if you want to comply with the European PAL standard. Or you can even go down to 24 frames per second like they use in the cinema if you prefer that look. You have the option to shoot 60 frames per second, but that is mostly used if you want to slow down the footage in post-production. But remember one thing, the transfer speed is the same, so you're basically squeezing in more frames into the same amount of data. The quality will be lower, but will you be able to see it in real life? I doubt it but now at least you know. You will get the highest quality by using 24, 25 and 30 frames per second, indicated with the small HQ label next to the frame rates. Exposure levels. During daylight, I always underexpose my footage to preserve the highlights. A drone is assessing the overall exposure level of the image. And this can make bright areas look less flattering and washed out. Depending on the situation, I normally underexpose between 0.3 and 1. And I don't underexpose under low light conditions. In case you're wondering what this stop unit is, this basically means that one stop equals either halving or doubling the amount of light that goes through the lens. Color temperature. If you want to be 100% sure that the color temperature of your footage is not changing when you are flying, you have to go in the camera menu and switch the white balance into manual mode. You have to select a color temperature that matches the environment that you are flying and the drone will keep that exact color temperature throughout your flight. I do this sometimes, but most of the time I actually leave it in auto as the drone is pretty good at assessing the color temperature and does not change it that much during flight. So this is really not a big issue. Color profile. I record everything in the standard color profile as it looks pretty nice right out of the box. Some would argue that the footage is overshamed and the saturation have been boosted. In some cases, this would actually be an advantage and make your footage stand out on social media. So this is why I like it like it is, because this will allow me to use the footage in my videos on YouTube with minimal work, which I will assume is also your purpose to use the footage on social media. De-sharpening. If you don't like that look and wants to turn down the sharpness directly in camera, there is a menu under the camera settings that's called style. Below that, there are two sliders. One will allow you to de-sharpen the footage directly in camera, and the other one will allow you to play around with noise reduction. Tools to nail composition. To nail composition by placing objects on specific locations in the frame that has been proven to be compelling to your eyes. You could do that by enabling the grid that will divide your screen into nine equally sized rectangles. This grid is also known as rule of thirds. I use this very deliberately when I'm out flying and it's a lot easier to get this right the first time instead of trying to fix it afterwards. If you want me to make a separate video about compositions, then let me know in the comments below. Zebra stripes. Sometimes it's very hard to assess the exposure level through the screen when you're out filming in bright sunlight. The good thing is there are some tools in the app that will make this very easy for you. One of those tools are zebra stripes. They will show you areas of your footage that is overexposed by marking it with zebra stripes. It's super cool because it's real time and the stripes will not be part of the final footage. That is an awesome tool I use all the time. In some cases, it's difficult to avoid overexposure of your footage. And that is okay. Let's take an example like the sun. That one will always be overexposed. The histogram. That's a graphical representation of the pixels in the image. The chart will very easily show you if the footage is over or underexposed if the chart has been shifted left or right. Under normal flying conditions, you want a chart that's equally distributed between left and right. Some of the other settings worth mentioning. In general, I use MP4 as the video format and I use H.264 for encoding. The reason for that is that the H.264 is easier on the computer when you have to play back the footage. I leave the peaking levels off as they are only used during manual focus, which I don't recommend. As there are plenty of other stuff going on while you are flying and the drone is doing a perfectly fine job keeping focus. Storage space. 
This is not a setting, but it's more a practical advice because I've run into this many times. Make sure you have sufficient space on your SD card before you take off. You can see how much recording time you have left in the lower right corner of your screen. It sounds kind of obvious, but you would be surprised how many times if you fly frequently that you experience the dreaded out of this space. Should you use auto or pro mode? Now for something that would surprise you. I shoot most of my footage in auto. The reason for that is that it's actually not much you can control from the pro menu as the drone is a fixed aperture drone. When you are flying during daylight, your ISO will be locked to the lowest possible level of 100. And you can't adjust the amount of light that goes through the lens because the aperture is fixed for 1.7. So the only parameter you can change in the exposure triangle is the shutter speed. So keeping this one on auto, the drone will automatically adjust the shutter to the right exposure level according to your settings. But then the crowd screams, then you will not be getting any motion blur. That is correct. The motion blur will be minimal. But you have to remember one thing, you actually need motion in the image to take advantage of this. And in most cases with a wide angle lens flying far away from the ground, there's not really that much motion in the image. I do recognize that there are benefits using ND filters, but with a drone with fixed aperture, the hassle of dealing with this is simply not worth the benefits. What I normally do is I slap on an ND16 filter when I'm flying during daylight and keep that filter on there for the entire flight, which will make the auto adjustment shutter speed levels lower, introducing some degree of motion blur, ensuring that your footage will stay smooth. It's not perfect, but it's a pretty good trick. So these are the settings I use 95% of the time, and that will ensure you that you can use the footage directly out of the camera with little or no post-production. Do you have any settings that you prefer when you are out flying? Then let us know in the comments below. Did you see the video that I made about the attitude indicator? Not the altitude indicator, but the attitude indicator of the DJI Mini 3 Pro or any drone that's actually using the DJI Fly app. This is a lot more than just a compass. So in case that you missed that video, you can access this through this card. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to give a like. If you didn't like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you around.